Okay, today is April 13th, 2016. This is part two. We're, we're talking with Grandma Neil, and she is a Jones. Her, her maiden name is Jones, and we've been talking about her mother, Hazel Foster, and how they conducted their life. We're actually trying to talk about gardening and how uh, Hazel Foster, uh, what she did as a kid. Okay, Mom, would you tell us something about the pumpkins and things of uh, Hazel Foster? Well, Grandma Foster had a farm that was over two, 600 acres, and uh, that's a big farm, especially without a tractor, I think. But they had uh, wagons and horses by the dozen, and they had a big barn that, that held all the horses and cows. So that's basically a mile square, because isn't 640 acres a, mi a square mile? I don't know. So did they have like a square mile section? I don't know anything about it. I'm just telling this story. Okay, go ahead. And Mother said she never knew where Grandpa always planted the pumpkins, and they had huge, big pumpkins. So her father, Grandpa Foster. But uh, because... Uh, that was one little place on the big farm that she ever ever went. <laughs> but they always had a big garden and everybody got out there and hoed and weeded. And the men too, the men always helped. Mom, uh, your mom Hazel, what was her mom's name? Florence Adora. Florence Adora Carter? Carter. So she was a Foster. Carter. <laughs> And she married a foster. Right. And what was her father's name? What was your, what was Hazel's father's name? Do you know? Well, I think it was, it had a lot of names. It was, one of them was Leroy. Leroy. And I can't remember, but he had four or five names. He was but his, his first name was Leroy Foster. Well, that's one of the names. I think it's toward the last. <laughs> but that's what he went by. It was Leroy, the grapple garter. No, are we talking about Carter or well, you Foster? Said her father, her grandpa. Oh, okay. So her grandpa, okay, Hazel's grandpa Carter. I mean, her mom, her parents were Carters, and he, it was Leroy Carter. Her, my mother's parents were Fosters. Okay, let's go back to the Fosters. <laughs> I have no idea what Grandma Fosters. We have it, you know, written down, but I don't remember. Where gotcha. That's fine. So we're talking about. A, Hazel's childhood, Hazel Foster's childhood right now. Now, what about her pumpkin patch? Well, that, that was it. Uh, she never knew where it was. It was a big farm. And she, but I was said they had a big garden, and uh, they all got out and worked in it, and hoed and put full weeds. And they uh, produced everything but their sugar and their coffee and flour. And they would take the, they would take the wheat and corn out of the ground, you know, and so they had cornmeal and wheat. So the farm was so big they couldn't find the pumpkins. Mother, she didn't know. Mother, she was the baby of the family. Now were these small pumpkins, really small no, ones? Oh, huge pumpkins! She said, big pumpkins. <laughs> So they were so big, could somebody pick them up? Or were, did you have to have a tri uh, wagon? Listen, I don't know anything about that. But I do know that Grandpa always had bring, brought in big pumpkins. And, uh, and they also had an apple orchard. I think it was... I think it was uh, three acres of apples. Wow. They, they had all different kind of apples, and, and one year they had a bumper crop, and they they stacked them up, and he tried to sell them, and everybody else had a bumper crop too, so he bought uh, an a, an apple thing that turned it into vinegar, and so he'd bring it home, and he turned they had they uh, stored apple juice and vinegar, and anything that an apple would make they. Apple. Then they made, you know, butter, apple butter, and and uh, and then also they they'd cut the apples up and dry them out, and they'd lay them up in a place where the birds couldn't get them, but the sun could hit them. 
and I don't know where that was. <laughs> Might have been on top of the roof. It was somewhere where they had a lot of sunlight and uh, where the birds couldn't get them. And they would, uh, they stored all those apples, but also they would wrap the apples up, the good ones, and put it in a basket and save it and they'd last till Christmas time. So the apples couldn't touch each other? Oh no, they'd have it wrapped up in paper, but newspapers or some catalogs, whatever. I don't know where they got all that paper. They worked at that. <laughs> and uh, anyway, that's the way. And they, if they ever had a big lot of fish, they would uh, dry them out and salt them, you know, and make it last. Of course, they always they had the, the Coon Creek so they could fish. Grandpa all and I went down and fish. And they had fish for breakfast. Did you? Now, are you talking about your experiences when you went to visit your grandpa? Or are you talking about stories from mother's girlhood? But she would. But this is how she told you. This is how she told me. Gotcha. It sounded like you may have experienced this also. Well, I've been up there in the house many times. But anyway, this is what they did every morning. I'll tell you the, the days. They would get up. A, whatever, what, five o'clock, and everybody go down and milk all these cows. Everybody had two or three cows, and the cows knew just exactly what stall, where to go to be milked. And mother was little, so she only milked one. But anyway, uh, then they'd bring it back, and they'd put it through their milk. Separate out the cream or something? And the milk and the cream, and, and Anyway, they had it in the big cans, and they, and they, uh, the big wagon would come by and, and pick up their gallons of milk, and you know they made all kinds of things with milk. They chewed ate cheese, and not that professional. Okay, I'm, I'm uh, going down a rabbit rabbit trail. And anyway, well, so they would come back, and they had, had left one person for to fix breakfast. And so when they got back, they had uh, bacon and eggs, and they didn't have grits or. I so how early in the morning did they get up then? I said at least five o'clock. At least five. Not, I'm sorry. Never later than that. And they, by the time they got back for and breakfast. And so but the girls, they would get up, get dressed, and make their beds, and come down, and they all go out and do that. Well, when they came back, they all the women gathered in and sold. This is when they they sold every day. Now one person out of the old group would fix lunch, or they could fry. They could fry chicken because they had a lot of a lot of chickens. Or but they'd have to get kill it and and uh, pluck it. Yeah. And they usually did two at a time, you know, because there's a lot of people. And uh, the rest of them would sew, and they had to sew every day. They would make all their clothes and quilts and. And it was a time of fellowship and everything. And uh, so then, uh, after they ate lunch, oh, see, what was it? That so did? would this be about 1890, you think, or 1880? It's yeah, it's that is in there somewhere. <laughs> about this time period that you're talking about right now. Right. And. Uh, the Civil War had already passed, so Mother was born in the Mother was actually born in 18, 1880, well, two years before uh, nine, 1900. Oh, 1898. She, 1898, okay. So this is really 1900s that we're talking about. No, we're really talking about 1800s. Well, yeah, I guess we are in the beginnings of that. Because your mom's alive. So this is really about 1900 well, or 1902. Well, this is what they did all the time. They'd all come down and, and sew. I mean, and they did this for, you know, generation after generation. Right. But I can't remember what they did in the afternoon. Oh, well, they'd go out and they had, they had to... They were hard workers. They worked in the garden and they... And if you don't think that's hard, you just do it. <laughs> No, especially if you have a big garden, that's a lot of work. That's a lot of work to weed it and hoe it and 
and then produce, take them. Do you know what they produced as uh, in the early 1900s? Well, the same thing. No, I just know the oh, peas and carrots and cabbage and corn. And they did everything, bro. I'm sure they had everything. Yeah, well, definitely corn, because they'd take corn to the market and have it ground, and they had cornmeal. So, you know, they had big corn fields. Well, 640 acres, or 600 plus acres, that's a lot. How much of it was actually under farming? I have no idea. Did they, I mean, you've talked about the milk cows. Were there other animals? Well, there was horses by the <clears throat> dozens. Now, they would work the horses, and on Saturday they would go to town, and Sunday they would try to let the horses rest, and they walked to church, which was three miles to church, and they did that every Sunday. And they walked through the fields, because they could cut off a mile and a half if you walked through the field. Well, that's just smart. But the only thing, they had rotten bulls in that field. <laughs> or horses, and they become galloping toward them, and, and sometimes you'd run for your life. So are we talking about stallions or both? You're saying they've had a lot of... H-O-R-S-C, I don't know anything more than that. Oh, just horses. Now, but, but you said bulls there for a second, but you were talking just about the horses. Well, I was thinking about the bull, too, because Mother said she had to run. She ran when the bull started running. So, he was yeah. clear across the thing, and he looked up and saw her. And, and so he ran for her. And she was able to... She's like me. You didn't jump over anything. You crawled through, through or crawled under or rolled under. And so she always just barely make it sometimes with that bull. But they put him in another pasture, too, but... At that time, she was having to be chased. Oh, that's never fun when you have a, a thousand-pound animal coming at you. You bet. <laughs> so, but the horses also would chase you? Is that what I heard? Would chase I them? have been chased by a horse. They looked up, they were clear across the field, and Patricia and I was walking through the field going to visit her friends. And those horses came after us pell mell, and boy, we ran pell mell too. <laughs> no, but on the way to church, you said that the horses would chase them sometimes when they went through the fields. Is well, that? Well, that's right. They just went through their own fields, but they had horses in there. But they let the horses rest because it was Sunday, and they didn't want to work them to death. So sure. They let them have their day of rest. They they need it. Everyone needs a day of wet rest. And when it was really cold weather, really bad, well, they he would heat a rock or whatever, or a <clears throat> one of those irons, and in the hot, you know, he get them hot and wrap them up, and you'd put at your feet, and they'd go the the whip, the women would go in the buggy, and the men would go on horseback or or walk. To church? Anyway, are we talking about, or just anywhere? I'm talking to church. They only went to church on Sunday. And also, they stayed all day. Now, the Fosters went to, you think, a Methodist church? Okay, this is it. The Fosters were really Methodist at heart. But they'd had to fast concrete to get there. And lots of times it rained, and you wouldn't be able to get back home if it, the, the river creek came up. It's so a creek rise. So it rose. they went to a Baptist church. She was raised in a Baptist church. Also. And that was where, after they moved, Mother was 12 years old when they moved to, from uh, Perseverance to Jasper. And, uh, and they had to walk to school, of course. Okay, well, this is now becoming about a 14-minute video plus. So this part two is now coming to an end. Uh, love you guys. Okay, we'll pick up from here. We're still going to be talking about gardens. Okay, love you. Bye-bye.